Okay. I want to welcome everybody. We got a nice crowd. We got we got uh, some champions here tonight, and that's a special night. So I can't I can't wait. Yep. Okay. Okay. So if you don't mind, let's all stand and say uh, the um, prayer and the pledge of allegiance of the flag. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening just thanking you for another day. We ask that you bless this community, everyone that is here in this building on today. We ask that you shower them with your blessings. God, we ask that you continue to lead, guide, and direct this council as we make decisions for those in the Talbot County community. And we also ask for a special blessing of, for the families that may have lost loved ones in the Key Bridge collapse on today. We ask that you give them peace. We hope that bodies are recovered on today and that we have a good survival rate. We ask you for all these blessings in the name of your son. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Like I said, I just want to welcome everybody and we'll get ready to get into the agenda. Um, the agenda is before us from March 27. Is there any additions, deletions, or corrections to the agenda tonight? No. Okay, hearing none, the agenda um, uh, is accepted by unanimous consent. Okay, next is the minutes of February 27th. We've had a chance to take a look at them. Is there any deletions, corrections, or additions to that? No. Council? Okay. All right, hearing none, the chair moves that the minutes be accepted as unanimous consent. Okay, next on the agenda is the disbursements of March 19th and March 26th. Um, Council's had time to review that, review the disbursements. Is there any uh, deletions, corrections, or um, additions to? The disbursements okay okay council nope hearing none um, the chair moves that the disbursements uh, be accepted as unanimous consent okay first on the agenda um, is is the judge judge you want to come on up okay madam secretary you want to go ahead and uh, um, read the uh, recognition into the record please council's commendation to the Honorable Stephen Hughes Kehoe Whereas on September 30th, 2014, the Honorable Stephen Hughes Kehoe began serving the citizens of Talbot County and the state of Maryland as judge of the Second Judicial Circuit of Maryland, Circuit Court for Talbot County. And whereas during his term as judge of the Circuit Court for Talbot County, Judge Kehoe has served as a member of the Talbot County Drug and Alcohol Abuse Council and as the Second Judicial Circuit Representative on the Conference of Circuit Court Judges since 2017. And whereas, Judge Kehoe began his distinguished law career following his graduation from the Case Western Reserve University, Franklin Thomas Bacchus School of Law in 1986. And whereas, following his admittance to the Maryland Bar in 1986, joining the Talbot County Bar Association in 1987, and prior to being appointed to the bench, Judge Kehoe served on the Board of Trustees of the Office of the Public Defender, 2013-2014, and as a, as a mentor in the Court of Appeals Mentoring Program 2011-2012, a member of the Aging Lawyers Subcommittee at the Maryland Professionalism Center 2013-2014, and has been a fellow of the Maryland Bar Association since 2006. And whereas, from 1986 until his appointment to the bench, Judge Kehoe spent the majority of his legal career with the law firm of Ewing Dietz, Fountain and Kehoe, PA, in Easton, where he focused on civil trials, land use, and commercial and municipal law, as well as criminal cases, divorce, and litigation involving estate matters. Now, therefore, we, the County Council of Talbot County, do hereby bestow upon you, as a token of the esteem and gratitude of the citizens of Talbot County, the state of Maryland, and the nation, for your contributions to the legal profession, the certificate of commendation this 26th day of March, 2024. Okay, thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, is, is there a motion? So moved. Second. second. Okay, we got a motion second to approve, um, to put this certificate in as the way it's presented. Madam Secretary, could you call the vote? Mr. Callahan. Aye. 
Mr. Steph? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Noki? Aye. Ms. Haight? Aye. Okay. Judge? Well, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Thank you, members of the council. Around the time my parents moved down to Bosman in 1978, I was in college, and a friend of mine's father was the president of a university in Mississippi, William Carey College. And his, he told me, keep your eyes open. You never know where life will take you. If when I was your age somebody told me I'd be president of a college, I would have laughed in their face. <laughs> And if you had told me when my parents moved down here that I would be able to serve the people of Talbot County as a circuit court judge and be a prism for the values of the people of this community, I would never have believed it mm -hmm. until it happened. And it's been a great luxury to serve the people of Talbot County. And now I'm going to go serve the whole state of Maryland. And I thank you for the... Mm -hmm great relationship mm -hmm. that um, the court has enjoyed with the council over the past decade and I hope that mm -hmm. my successor enjoys mm -hmm. an equally good if not mm -hmm. better relationship That's great. thank you all That's great. thank you judge thank you Ke Keisha yeah. yeah judge we're gonna miss you mm -hmm. but um, congratulations on your new appointment and uh, hopefully we will get someone uh, as equally as good as you to serve us here in Talbot right County now. Mm -hmm. Keep it getting better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, congratulations. Keep moving on up. I think this is a great, great yep. job. This is yep. the top of the ladder. <laughs> this will be the top of the yep. ladder. Uh, yeah. your, your Honor, I want to thank you for your service and, and for your generosity. Uh, you've invited me into your courtroom several times. I will clarify always as an observer. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, but, but watching, watching uh, the effectiveness of what you've done with the problem-solving court and then most recently just you, the generosity of your time when I brought my son's scout troop into the courtroom. Uh, you've been public-minded and, and community-spirited uh, in, in all of this, uh, in your leadership in the courtroom, and I just want to thank you personally for all of that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Judge, congratulations again. Um, nothing but best wishes in your, in your new role. Uh, keep doing a great job for, uh, for, for the state of Maryland. Thank, thank you. you. Yep, and same here, Judge. Congratulations to everything. So don't take it personal now that we're getting new furniture for your office, okay? <laughs> so, that was you your asked request. for it. You, that was you, your it was request. your request, okay? <laughs> what, so, what were, what were so the don't words? take that the wrong way. Do the okay? same as my successor. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, but now if you come, come on up here, we got something for you. Okay, well, appreciate, appreciate the judge being here and everything, so it's great. All right, next on the uh, agenda, um, Madam Secretary, we've got, uh, could you go ahead and um, read that one into the record, please? Certificate of recognition to Nick Antal, Jamie A. Cooper, Armand Dink Cornish Jr., Jacob Donaway, Zayden Ellis, Samir Ellis, Josiah Flamer, Brady Gleese, Garnell Trey Henry III, Caleb Henson, Javon Jones, or Javian Jones, Javon Jones, Max Lacourt, Carter Langston, Elijah Lewis, Dace Miller, Samaj Nichols, Nicholas O'Connor, James Paris, Fernando Perez, Dalen Pink Pinkett, Charles C.J. Spencer, mm -hmm. Jr., mm -hmm. Chad Stanley, James <laughs> Stevenson, in recognition of your valuable contributions to the 2023 
13 and under Talbot Braves football team, AYF Big East Bayside Conference Division II state champions. Given under our hands on the great seal of Talbot County this 26th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024. Okay, good job, Madam Secretary. <laughs> Okay, let's, um, is, is there a motion? So moved. Okay, second. we've got a motion second to go ahead and prove it, put it in um, a cert certificate as, as um, uh, recognition. recognition. Um, Madam Secretary, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Mm -hmm. Aye. Ms. Milky? Aye. Ms. Hayes? Aye. Okay, okay. Hey, Chuck, we, uh, we yeah. have one more. You want to do the second yeah. one? Do the second one right away? Sure. Is, okay, yep, yeah, that's fine, yep. Yeah. Certificate of recognition to Ted Antal, coach, Ladarian Blake, coach, Deshaun Green, coach, Dante Henry, coach, Garnell Henry Jr., coach, Tyrone Johnson, coach, Ben Morse, coach, Peter Paris, coach, Lauren Antal, team mom, Candace Henry, team mom. In recognition of your valuable contributions to the 2023 13 and under Talbot Braves football team, AYF, Big East, Bayside Conference, Division II state champions, given under our hands in the great seal of Talbot County this 26th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024. That's great. <laughs> okay, so let's put that in the record. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, we got a motion second to go ahead and put that in the, in the uh, in, in the record as presented. Madam Secretary, could you call the vote, please? Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Milky? Aye. Ms. Hayes? Aye. Okay. Um, Peter, you want to come on up and, and, and Mrs. Henry? Okay, the coach? Okay, whoever would like, yeah. Who, who, yeah? Sure, absolutely. Whoever you feel that wants to come up. Well, we're going to take pictures in a minute. If you don't mind, maybe maybe just give us a little brief, you know, season. If you don't mind, just tell us what the season was all about. But, you know, just, yeah, just, just, just a briefing now. Just a briefing now. You know? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 First and foremost, we stand here humbly, gratefully, and honored to be recognized by council. Mm -hmm. We got a group of hardworking kids, mm -hmm. parents, coaches. Each one of these coaches, they know the kid by a first name basis. Right. You know, it's not like, hey, you, what's your number? Come here. Yeah. We always use football as a vehicle to raise young men. Mm -hmm. It's all about integrity, respect, mm -hmm. discipline, hard work. And when you see a group of individuals that come together from all different walks of life, we have that same Right. Goal. Right. These kids started the season off. It went six games before somebody even scored. Right. And after each game, we had running clocks. That Monday, after a hard work right. game on Saturday, they would drop the sled. They never right. limit themselves. Mm -hmm. And I just want to edge off, coach, <laughs> edge off, president. We want to thank you for what y'all have done for the Talbot Braves, this town. We would not be able to do it without y'all. Always said, as your president, as your head coach, mm -hmm. there's nothing I want to do for y'all. Because I knew God would go for me. And this organization, I knew the kids were safe with coaches, with parents. And again, we just, you're a champion today. You're going to be a champion yesterday. You're going to be a champion tomorrow. You're going to be a champion for the rest of your life. And That's I'm right. proud of y'all and just thank you, again, yep. Council, for okay. acknowledgement and recognition for the Braves. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, guys. All right, we got. We. Yep. 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 Come on. Come on up. We'll take some pictures. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
got players who are taller than all the coaches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm going to give you guys to kind of... Yeah. Big, big. Like, big. Big. Come on, man. Big. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, There we go. Give, give me the chocolate and the perfect. There you go. I'll help you out. I'll help you out. Okay. Um, hey, Ray. Ray, you and Mike can come on up. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Council. Let's get ready to get started. Um, next thing on the agenda is a priority list of the Maryland Department of Transportation. Um, Mr. Clark um, and Mike are here. Um, so uh, you want to go ahead and um, go through go through our list? Thing. Again, I'm Ray Clark, yep. County yep. Engineer. Um, Council, each year we provide a uh, list, a priority list to state highways for improvements on state highway roads. Um, at the same time, we also have presented to you and forwarded to the, uh, the towns as well the list that was submitted last year so um, you know again we've received information from the towns last year we just provided that information to them on Friday um, at the same time what we're also looking to do with this priority list um, is also identify uh, three road projects for Talbot County that would be hopefully um, added to the state's transportation improvement plan so we've added uh, Black Dog Alley Goldsboro Neck Road as well as Airport Road with the intent of trying to have those projects added to what they call the State Transportation Improvement Plan or Program or STIP and that would then open us up to uh, going directly to USDOT for funding so that's the reason we were kind of incorporating that into this list as well yeah I got you um, mm -hmm. but at this point in time I can give you kind of the rankings uh, or the priorities that we have with no changes from last year um, the first priority would be for Maryland Route 322 and US uh, 50 intersection improvements north. This would be associated with the hospital area um, mm -hmm. on that. And then we also have our number two priority would be the um, Maryland Route 33 capacity safety and evacuation improvements. Um, and then our priority number three would be uh, the Maryland Route uh, 333 Oxford Causeway, uh, which is the, uh, when you're entering the town of Oxford. Uh, the other priority number four would be um, the Maryland Route 329 Royal Oak Road safety improvements. And then we have uh, pretty much uh, the next, uh, I think, five, uh, three items we have are what we call priority number five. These are um, U.S. Route 50 improvements uh, at the intersections of um, 328 Goldsboro, um, 
street um, in, uh, intersection improvements, U.S. Route 50 and um, Dover Road or th uh, route, uh, Maryland Route 331, as well as uh, U.S. Uh, route 50 and Chapel Road uh, intersection improvements there. And then for item number six, uh, priority number six would be U.S. Route 50, Maryland Route 309, and Maryland Route 366, or Maryland Route 662 intersection capacity improvements. Again, this is uh, you know part of the is um, going to be associated with the hospital improvements as well, and then uh, at the same time, Airport Road and um, uh, 662 and U.S. Route 50 again uh, associated with the hospital improvements as well. Um, that being said, then we um, oh, I'm sorry we did have number eight uh, that was added as well, which is the Frederick uh, Douglas uh, Recreational Trail from the town of Easton to the uh, town of Queen Anne. So uh, one of the things we are working on right now is this effort has been underway for so many years, but so we just need to confirm what that is with our economic development director and we'll get that uh, updated. So, And then the other items we have is for uh, the airport, uh, airfield moderniz um, modernization program, and then the town has listed their projects. I didn't know if you want me to go through it or, you know, you know I can if you'd like and just give you a brief or Council, what's what's your thoughts? I I think we're straight, aren't we? Yeah. Yep, we're good. We're good. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, any yep. changes the council sees in the uh, priorities for the state and pro, uh, state state road uh, priority improvements? I, I I think I think the only one that I was wondering, um, which is is would be priority number seven. Okay. okay. So, um, I, and you can tell me, Ray. I I think somewhat with the way they're doing things there now it, it's kind of underway already because they're doing some stuff up there the uh, this is uh, pro i mean right now i think this would be what, what i envision happening at this point and it's something we've got to work with state highways on yeah right um is it's, when we're looking at doing the uh, airport road improvements uh -huh. as we move um towards let's say um uh, that uh, intersection of 662 and then ultimately US, U.S. Route 50, mm -hmm. that that becomes, we're probably have, gonna have to do intersection improvements with a signalized intersection at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, in, that would be a signalized intersection for Airport Road and uh, Maryland Route 662. Mm -hmm. And I would anticipate that'll have to be synchronized with the U.S. Route 50 light. So it's, you know, I think it's with, with the advent of the uh, hospital coming, right. that's something that's probably gonna have to come as well at some point. So. Right. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, so. at this point, I mean, I, you know, I would say, you know, we could possibly move that up if the council sees that. Or well, my, I think my point was, if if we're getting closer to the hospital approvals here in the next three months, I, I would almost think that that automatically kicks in to whatever priority right. on, this, not necessarily us, but it's right. it's going to happen. I, I, I'm just I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah. That's all. I, I would say you know keeping it at number seven is probably a good idea at this point in time. Mm -hmm. I would still have it on the list in my, oh, yeah. in my recommendation. But they already list. know it. Yes. Uh -huh. um, I, 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 I would say yes and no. I don't oh, okay. know if they. Okay. I don't. I mean, this has been provided to them. Uh -huh. But at this point in time, what they've been discussing with SHA, mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, the hospital or UMS, mm -hmm. is basically the relocation of 662. So there, that's, and then ultimately building a new um, entrance um, mm -hmm. off of 662, which would be a ra like a roundabout. Mm -hmm. um, that's currently being discussed, but as far as any offsite improvements, uh, there's, there's a, st a traffic study that's been done that's being reviewed by SHA, and they are looking at other intersections, I will say that. We've not been provided any information at this point okay. as to what okay, those good. intersection improvements might be. Okay, Mr. Stan? I, I would just uh, yeah. support making sure that we have it on the list. I mean, yeah, clearly, it's whether it's a seven or a one. Uh, whatever, yeah. yeah it, right. it, having it on the list is important because as a as a uh, engineer, the relocation 662, they're gonna have to address intersections right. anyway, and we're, we're uh, yeah. Reinforce that by having it on our list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. So the work, yep. yeah, so go the work that's going on now at, at Airport Road and 50, yep. really all they're doing is the, the signals now are basically hanging on wires between yes. the poles. Uh -huh. So they're just going to put them on cantilever mounts. Okay. So really they're just modernizing what's there today. Gotcha. So I, it, it's okay. a, it might be worthwhile keeping it on the list for yep. that reason too. Yep. So, yeah, I'm, yep. no, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. and, any other questions? of? of Okay, for Not those for guys. Not this particular list, but I do have a question on Black Dog Alley. Yeah, go ahead. So, Ray, um, when will the signs be posted on Black Dog Alley? Well, I think Mike can probably attest to, or talk a little bit about that, but I think we're looking at advanced warning signs that need to be posted by state highways, but 
Yeah, I'll, I'll let Mike. Okay, so actually I sp spoke to him as recent as yesterday, trying to figure out why we haven't gotten them yet. And so mm -hmm. the, um, if you recall at the north end of Black Dog Alley, to advance, have advanced warning for trucks so they don't commit to getting off of mm -hmm. 50, the warning signs have to be on Route 50, mm -hmm. which is two roads away from Black Dog, if you think right. about it. So anyhow, the, the district office, who's been very accommodating, um, they weren't really sure how to do the signs, so they sent it up to their Office of Traffic and Safety in, up in Hanover, Maryland. And that's complicated matters because they're wanting to know why we're doing this weight restriction. Um, they want a, like a traffic study. So in talking to the district office, they think they can work that out and they're doing that right now. So uh, to explain to them why we're doing this. And so I sent them a bunch of pictures of the road distress and, and mm -hmm. the no shoulders mm -hmm. and such yesterday. So I'm hoping that'll free that up. But until we have that advanced signing, it's sort of hard to have those weight restrictions. Um, it's certainly an unexpected complication for sure. Did we have a conversation with State Highway prior to? We did, right. The local? And, you know, I think it was one of those things where like, oh yeah, no problem, until they started looking at the, the specifics of some of these intersections and, and the configuration of them. So it's, you know, if it was as simple as, uh, say for example, at Dover Road, it's pretty straightforward. It's a, you know, you're making a turn right off of Dover Road onto Black Dog. So the advanced signing is pretty easy. But at the north end, where you're coming off of 50 onto 309, then to Black Dog, um, I didn't expect it to be this complicated, but they seem to think it is. So we're just trying to work through that. Okay, and they didn't give us anything in writing prior to? Mm, that no. That there wouldn't be a problem? Correct. Okay. Correct. It was just a verbal. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. And Go Mike, ahead. for what it's worth, I, I mean, it might be worth uh, asking our sheriff's department for some uh, statistics in regards to that road to right. help that as well. I know that's one of our hot spots in our county. They might be able to provide some uh, photographs of some accidents that could sure. that could help that cause and maybe help facilitate this a little a little quicker for you. Okay, we'll do. Yeah, because the trucks are still coming through there. I mean, there was a lot um, this weekend. Okay. So I take that way home and it, they're, they're still coming through. And it's not local um, tractor trailers. Yeah, I, I would offer that optimally we would want to have advanced warning on state highways. Um, that would probably be the most appropriate way to go about this and we've been waiting for that. However, that being said, there is nothing stopping us from mounting those signs and, and carrying out the order of council. We just believe that it's safer and more appropriate to get the state highway signs up first. But at some point in time, we could post those signs on Black Dog Alley. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, and I guess if we did that, then they would have to travel down the road and then notice the signs, and then maybe that would deter them from coming back um, a second time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. I agree. I think we should yep. get them up because summer's getting ready to hit and they're gonna okay. hit those roads. Maybe council could consider uh, us uh, trying to move this before the next meeting and then uh, we, we potentially come to you with action for next meeting <laughs> on it. Mm -hmm. Be great. Okay. Yeah. Good. okay. All right, guys, and, and Ray, um, I really appreciate you and Mike. Um, you know, we had a couple complaints down Cedar Point Road and you put some speed limit signs there and I really appreciate that, you, you doing that. that. That made a big difference to people. Good, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. appreciate it. Okay, guys, Any, anything else? Or? Okay, all right, thanks, good good job. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay, um, all right, next is an uh, introduction of, of uh, administrative. I'm sorry. Do we need a motion um, for that? Council letter? usually takes the vote. Oh, do we? To oh, okay. To Unless we've caused it to uh, gather more information, or I mean, if we need, if we need to rearrange priorities or anything like that, but if we're happy with it, we can move on at this meeting. Okay. Is is everybody happy moving on it? Yep. Okay. Is okay. We'll is there a motion? We'll make the motion. Second. Okay, we got a motion, second to go ahead and and um, submit the list um, to the state. Um, Madam Secretary, could you call the vote? 
Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Milkey? Aye. Ms. Hayes? Aye. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, an introduction of the administrative resolution. Um, Madam Secretary, could you go ahead and uh, put that into the record for us, please? An administrative resolution authorizing Talbot County to file an application with the Maryland Transit Administration of the Maryland Department of Transportation for a Section 5303, 5304, 5307, 5309, 5310, and 5311 grant under the Federal Transit Act. Okay, is, is that uh, this, something? Well, this is part of the uh, paperwork that uh, right. goes with the approval that we council gave on the March 12th. Okay, and all right. Was, we in it, I inadvertently left it off the agenda. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we need um, a motion then? We, we need a show of hands show for hands. Oh, introduction. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, good. Show of hands. So introduced by council. Mm -hmm. Take a vote on it. Or? Yeah. Hmm? It goes to vote. It goes to vote. You can take it to vote. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was kind of looking at here. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there a motion? Is that, I think you can just, you just, just call, the, call the vote. Call okay. The vote. All right, Madam Secretary, um, could you call the vote, please? Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Milkey? Aye. Ms. Haight? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and ne next on the agenda, Madam Secretary, would be the, um, the adoption of the handbook. Administrative resolution adopting mm -hmm. the 2024 employee handbook for Talbot County, Maryland. Do you want me to read the entire thing? Um, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't think you need to. Okay. Okay. Go, go ahead, Mr. Council, you do have uh, with us tonight the director of administrative services, Donna Pardue. Oh, I see her out there. This. Yeah. Yep. You want to come up for two seconds? Are you? Yeah. Yep. Tell everybody the good work you've been doing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, um, any questions for council? Um, you know, Donna's done a great job putting the whole handbook together for us, and we really appreciate, you know, all the hard work you've done that because that takes a while, and we want to make sure that all the employees are, are are well educated, and you know. So, I think you've done a great job. Thank you. Yep. Done a good job. And good. Council, I'd just yep. like to recognize Donna. Donna's mm -hmm. not been with us a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, she she comes to us with a great deal of experience uh, from her previous role uh, in human resources and administrative services. And one of the first things she did was um, address our employee handbook to ensure that we were uh, readily in compliance with all uh, appropriate federal and state labor laws and uh, mm -hmm. and, and just uh, update it in all the different sections so mm -hmm. I just like to recognize her for her work she vetted it through all the appropriate groups and uh, of course it's been to council for review as well so I yep. just want to thank her for yep. her work it's good. It's good any other thing from council nope. okay I just thank all you right too, good Donna, so uh, hard work. Yep. You. okay okay appreciate it yes okay at, at this time so um, we'll go ahead and uh, make a motion to go ahead and accept the uh, the new handbook. So move. Second. Okay, we've got a motion second. Madam Secretary, could you call the vote? Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Milkey? Aye. Ms. Hayes? Aye. Okay. All right. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Good job, Thank you. Okay. All right. Now we got next on the agenda um, introduction of a number of resolution. Resolution to formally decline to accept the offer of dedication for the Paper Street portion of Calvert Avenue is shown on a subdivision plat entitled Map of Rio Vista Development, dated February 1954, recorded among the land records of Talbot County, Maryland, at Plat Book JTB 8, Folio 11, and to authorize the execution of a quick claim deed to convey a 4,195 square foot portion of the Paper Street adjacent to 226 Tyler Avenue, St. Michael's, Maryland, to the owners of such property, Dr. Grayson R. Bowers and Teresa M. Bowers, for no monetary consideration. 
Okay, Madam Secretary, thank you. Mr. Thomas, you want to go over just briefly on, on what we're trying to try, try to achieve here? Yes, this, uh, this resolution was uh, prompted by a request from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bowers mm -hmm. uh, regarding a paper street portion of Calvert Avenue mm -hmm. in Rio Vista. Uh, it's shown on a recorded plat as running between um, several lots and connects Forest Avenue and Monroe Street. Mm -hmm. uh, this paper street was offered to be dedicated to public use as a county road in the, mm -hmm. I in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. However, the area is, is wooded and overgrown. <coughs> um, I believe as uh, Mr. Murtaugh and Mr. Clark can tell you, there's no <coughs> plans for the county to ever open it as a, as a county road. Gotcha. Um, so the Bowers are, are requesting that the county formally reject the offer to dedicate the paper street to, uh, to public use as a county road and, and execute a quick claim deed um, for a portion of the prop of that paper street that abuts their property. Mm -hmm. um, I see also Mr. Showalter is here on behalf of the Bowers and he mm -hmm. can provide a little bit more context for their request as well. Okay. Brian, you want to come up for a second? Thank you, members of council. Hey, yep. Ryan Showalter yep. uh, on behalf of Dr. and Mrs. Bowers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think Patrick fairly summarized the request. Yep. This, this yep. is a paper street. Um, when, yep. when the plat was recorded, it included an offer of dedication, which has never mm -hmm. been accepted by the county. There are no plans to use it. And so mm -hmm. our clients would like to, uh, to take title to a small portion of it adjacent to their property. Okay, okay. sounds good. Okay, so um, here what we've heard, um, just uh, a show of hands to, to introduce. So introduced by council. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ryan. So, Madam Secretary, you want to go ahead and announce uh, when we're going to put a number in, in the hearing? Yes, this will be known as resolution number 356, and the public hearing will be on Tuesday, April 23rd at 6.30 p.m. At 6.30. Okay, that's great. Okay, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Okay, well, I think uh, we're, we're down to clay stuff, <laughs> you know? Thank you, Council. County okay. Manager report this evening. I have several pieces of business for you this evening. Uh, there are no board and committee appointments uh, for this evening. We'll be back in a couple of weeks for that. Um, hopefully we'll get some volunteers for our available positions on board mm -hmm. the committees. Mm -hmm. The first item, the uh, Superintendent of Roads and Facilities is recommending the award of bid number 2401 exterior repainting of the Talbot County Courthouse and State's Attorney Complex in Easton. Uh, this is a CIP project that was budgeted. Um, he's, he's requesting that we award this uh, uh, to the low bidder, J.A. Argatakis Contracting Company in the sum not to exceed $58,000. A total of nine bids were received. The county has worked with the company previously has been pleased with their work. The project was budgeted and approved at $47,000. Mr. Moore will work with the contractor modifying the scope of the work to meet the budget. Mr. Moore will be able to identify additional funds within his budget to complete the project as bid. Okay, thank you, Clay. Um, is, there, is there a motion? I'll move for approval. Second. Okay. okay, we've got a motion second. Madam Secretary, could you call the vote? Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Milkey? Aye. Ms. Hayes? Aye. Okay. The next item I have, Council, we, has a re we have a request from Eastern Utilities for a letter of support for Federal Section 219 Water Resources Development Act, WRDA, funding for water infrastructure modernization projects in the town of Easton. Um, again, uh, this will require no county funds. Okay. Is there a motion? I move the letter of support. Second. Okay, Madam Secretary, could you call the vote, please? Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Milkey? Aye. Ms. Mm -hmm. Hayes? Aye. Okay. Next item, I'll ask Ryan. I believe you're going to come up for Cassandra this mm -hmm. evening. Okay, we have a request from the Dar Department of Economic Development and Tourism for a letter of support for Maryland Heritage Area Authority, MHAA, grant funding for the federal designated National Science Byway from Chesapeake City, Maryland to Crisfield, Maryland to Smith Island. And uh, Ryan Snow is here on behalf of Cassandra this evening and can answer any questions or add any information for you. Hey, welcome, Ryan. Good evening. Yeah. It's 
Just yeah. like Judge Keo said, talk about full circle. It's great to be here. I feel like I'm at home again. Yeah. Yeah. But as Clay said, Cassandra sends her regrets. Okay. Tonight is the grad the graduation of the Talbot Business Works Academy. Mm. So you will get to see the graduates at your next council meeting. Oh, so great. it's been great. a phenomenal program and it's really been exciting. So thank you for yep. funding that initiative. Yep. Uh, this is just a letter of support from Cassandra and the department mm -hmm. for the uh, National Scenic Byways. That's a federal program through mm -hmm. the Department of Transportation mm -hmm. that highlights and elevates natural resources, historical, cultural, uh, programs and projects throughout roads that are less traveled. Mm -hmm. And of course, here on the Eastern Shore, we're a part of the Chesapeake Scenic mm -hmm. Byway. All nine Eastern Shore counties and all three heritage areas are a part of this. So this is just a letter seeking uh, your support. Okay. It will require a county match of um, $2,500 out of okay. Cassandra's budget. Okay. So this, this is a joint application of the three heritage areas to the MHAA? And all nine counties. Yes. And all nine counties. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. A any other questions from council? No. Nope. Nope. Make a motion to support the letter. Second. Okay. We've got a motion and a second to go ahead and support the letter. Madam Secretary, could you call the vote? Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Milkey? Aye. Ms. Heath? Aye. Okay. Good job. Great to see you all. Okay, Thank you. Ryan. Thanks for coming. Thank council, the next item I have is request uh, that you forward a letter to the local delegation in opposition to Maryland House Bill 558, primary and secondary education, comprehensive health education framework established. Uh, at this point, I would hand it over to Council Member Stepp for further information on this for your action. Okay, sure. And uh, so again, Council, uh, five, uh, House Bill 558 this year is the uh, redo of House Bill 119 from the 2023 session. Uh, as you remember from last year, uh, once our board of it, local board of education here uh, submitted a letter of opposition, we as a council elected to send a, uh, a follow through letter with our opposition as well, supporting our local board. Uh, I've reached out to uh, our board president this year, uh, Ms. Jackson, and uh, she would like to team together with council again in opposition of House Bill 558. So looking for support for that letter. Okay. Yeah, I, I noticed that there that this year's version of the bill has no change in the enforcement mechanism, and so maybe we want to adjust the the letter to take out that that provision since it uh, seems to address something in there. Um, this is a case where uh, the State Department of Education advises uh, in the in the fiscal policy note on this that. Uh, the current health education framework already contains all the elements all, uh, required by uh, by this law, uh, and so this would be taking relatively easy to change regulation and hardwiring it to state law, and as you note, know, reducing uh, uh, local uh, local decision making. Um, this is this is an e this is an, an easy piece of legislation to oppose. So. Okay. Motion Anything? to send the letter jointly with um, Board of Ed. Okay, second to second. Okay, we got a motion and second to go ahead and uh, send that uh, letter of support. Madam Secretary, could you um, call the vote? Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Milkey? Aye. Ms. Haight? Aye. Okay. Thank you, Council. Yep. And, and, uh, the next item I have is uh, I'll invite Ray Clark forward. A mm -hmm. request from the Department of Public Works to recommendation uh, to recommend then the award of change order number five to bid number 2307, Talbot County Public Safety Complex, phase one building renovation. You'll read in your agenda packet the Department of Public Works requesting approval to cha uh, for change order number five, bid 2307 for the Public Safety Complex. Specifically, the change order is in the amount of $1,835,330.60. We'll address replacing HVAC units, data cabling, electrical work, plumbing, uh, permit, weapon rack changes, ice maker installation, penal shower fixture, and installation of impact resistant windows. And overall, it will enhance the HVAC system and cabling, which is critical uh, to the future of the sheriff's office and 911 facility. Ray's here to add any additional information or answer any questions relative to this request. Okay. And just yeah. to the council, we did meet with the contractor last week um, and a couple members of the council. 
and they agreed to reducing the change order. Again, there was a, if we order the equipment before uh, April 1st, we would see um, an $82,000 reduction in that change order. Mm -hmm. And working with uh, both the contractor and the engineer, um, I'm sorry, the architect, we've also reduced that down to $100,000. So that would mm -hmm. actually Good. come down. Um, basically, the 18 plus um, the 82 would redu reduce that amount by a hundred thousand dollars so. okay all right all right good job any other questions okay is there a motion i'll move approval of the change order okay second, second. okay second. we've got a motion and second madam secretary could you call the vote mr callahan aye mr step aye mr lesher aye ms milky aye there's no other alternative ms hay aye okay thank Cal you ray thank you thank you ray yeah, yeah. Uh, the next item, Council, I'm requesting uh, if you would mind declaring April 16th a special legislative day. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll move to declare that special legislative day. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we got a motion second to go ahead and declare that uh, April 16th a uh, special legislation day. Madam Secretary, could you call the vote? Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Milkey? Aye. Ms. Hayden. Aye. Okay. Run everybody out of the room, apparently. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did. So yeah. therefore, I only have a couple announcements to make. Okay. In closing the county manager report. The county offices will be closed uh, this Friday, Monday, uh, March 20, I'm sorry, Friday, March 29th for Good Friday. And I also wanted to announce that the Maryland Environmental Service will be hosting a Household Hazardous Waste Day on Saturday, April 6th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. rain or shine at the Queen Anne's County Public Works Facility 312 Safety Drive in Centerville. More information can be found on the county website. And with that, that concludes your county manager report for this week, and I thank you for your support, Council. Okay, good job, Mr. Stamp. Okay, next on the agenda, did we, can we check and see if there was anybody out on the, um, on the list for, for public comment? That would be great. I got a feeling it's a long list tonight. I believe it is. <laughs> yep. I asked the deputy, but he didn't have any No? To ask. Okay, okay. Well, we, we asked, okay. All right, so I think next is going to be uh, council comments. Mr. Stepp. Uh, yeah, just so uh, Talbot Day upcoming, uh, April 25th, um, the poster contest and citizen of service award nominations are due on April 1st. Uh, winners will be recognized during the celebration on April 25th. And if anyone has any further information on that, the website, thank you, Sarah, talbotcountymd.gov forward slash Talbot Day. Thank you. And I have another one related to Talbot Day, which is that the Talbot County Office of Communications recently released two resources for residents to get in the spirit of celebrating Talbot County. Think you know Talbot County? Try your hand at the Talbot County theme trivia. Complete the bingo card for a special Talbot County prize pack while supplies last. Visit talbotcountymd.gov slash Talbot Day to view the Talbot County trivia and Talbot County bingo card resources. That's all I have. <laughs> Pete, you're going to be a commercial yeah, that's voice good. Right. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. This is um, Women's History Month, mm -hmm. and I'd like to acknowledge three women in Talbot County who I think were trailblazers. Um, the first one is uh, Dorothy Holden Thompson, who I was pleased to be an associate, and um, she was a proponent of women um, becoming lawyers. Um, I wish, remember she told this story that, um, I mean, she was born in 1920, so you know the time frame she went through. And she had um, been a law clerk to a judge. And back in that day, um, law clerks would assist the judge in their robes. But because she was a woman, she wasn't allowed to do that. She had to leave the room and a male had to assist the judge and putting on his robe. So we've come a long way, baby. Um, but she was very instrumental in my career and I have a debt of gratitude to her for um, uh, giving this female lawyer a start. 
and practiced the law here in 1979. Mm -hmm. um, second, I'd like to um, uh, celebrate uh, Joanna Asparagus. And she and I practiced law when the, count, when the state created positions of master, now it's called a magistrate, um, she was the first one that was um, appointed here by um, a, a male judge. So it was, um, I think, a real kudos to the women of the bar that the master magistrate was, was a woman. And then lastly, I'd like to um, give a shout out um, and a recognition of Diana Mounts, who we recently lost. Um, Diana led a 50-year commitment to leadership and mentorship on the Eastern Shore. During this time, she built one of the largest junior coasts um, sailing programs, um, and I remember her when I was a member of Miles River Yacht Club that, that she did that, um, and also at the Chesapeake um, and Tread Avon um, Yacht Clubs. And um, she was involved with the uh, YMCA. Um, she was also served on the board of the U.S. Junior Sailing and was touched and touched the lives of thousands of children. As the owner of the Carpenter Street Saloon, she was a uh, St. Michael's Business Association, uh, helping to transform the local town into a booming destination for visitors and around uh, the world. In so doing, she, was, she spearheaded many philanthropic efforts, uh, fundraising campaigns to support St. Michael's and Tillman um, uh, responders. Um, she, she was a wonderful asset to Talbot County, and she will be truly missed. Or will. Yep. Yes, yep. she will. So we must be thinking alike, the only two women here on the, the yeah. council. Yeah. So um, I was going to mention and, uh, the celebration of Women's History Month as well, and just remind everyone to check out um, Sarah's wonderful um, tributes in honor of women in uh, government in Talbot County. Um, but specifically, um, Ms. Gannon, who was one of the first um, elected females to the Talbot County Council, um, who we have recognized. And um, I learned about Ms. Gannon through her son, Greg Gannon, who we all know. Um, and certainly, he, he speaks very highly of, of his mother. Um, and so, just want to recognize her this evening for her service to, this, to the council. And then also, Nancy Clem. Um, her son, Darren, actually, um, when she passed away, he saved the newspaper articles um, from her serving on the um, county council and um, gave them to me, which I thought was very heartfelt when I was elected um, over a year ago. And so those two women, um, I certainly stand on their shoulders as being um, the first elected females to the county council and would like to just recognize them and their um, sons who are still with us and very active in the community of Talbot County today. So I salute um, those women. That's great, that's great. And all I have is um, I just want everybody to have a safe and uh, with their family, Easter, Easter this Sunday. So, um, you know, just uh, <coughs> say a little prayer, you know, there's, there's a lot to be thankful for. Um, and I want to wish the, the unfortunate stuff that happened this morning with over there in Baltimore um, say some prayers and hopefully f we find some people in, in, that, that, that lived through this. Yes. And um, I want to pray for the rescuers in the, in the um, emergency services to do that. And there was one touching thing. It got a little bit of chill, you know, in that last few seconds like we talked about, you know, the state police saved many lives from stopping that traffic going over that bridge. So, you know, just, just emergency services is so crucial um, to the community, to the state, <coughs> to everything. And, you know, in dire need, you call 911 a distress, they're there to help. So we all need to really understand how important emergency services police, all that stuff interreacts and grows with us and we, we can't do without these people. So um, they're heroes, so um, God bless them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yep. 
The County Council's next meeting will be held on Tuesday, April 9th, beginning at 6 o'clock p.m. The Council will be convening an open session at 2 o'clock p.m. for fiscal year 25 budget deliberations and then adjourning into closed session as listed on the statement for closing that meeting. Additionally, the Council will, will be meeting for fiscal 25 budget deliberations on the following dates, Wednesday, March 27th at 4 o'clock p.m. and Thursday, March 28th at 2.30 p.m. The Council will be convening on Thursday, April 4th at 5 o'clock p.m. for a work session on the Midshore Regional Landfill. All, all meetings will be held here in the Bradley Meeting Room and are open to the public. Therefore, is there a, meeting, uh, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting and reconvene as noted? So moved. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Madam Secretary, could you call the vote? Mr. Callahan? Aye. Mr. Stepp? Aye. Mr. Lesher? Aye. Ms. Milken? Aye. Ms. Hay? Aye. Okay. Well, have a good evening. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.